Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hampstead School Board meeting of Tuesday, May 26, 2020. Um, before we begin, I'd like to read an announcement regarding the state of emergency. As chair of the Hampstead School Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are A, providing public access to the meeting by telephone. We are utilizing Zoom for this electronic meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen to this meeting by dialing the following phone number, 888-475-4499 or 877-853-5257. B, providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting, including how to access the meeting using Zoom telephonetically. Instructions have also been pro provided on the district website at hampsteadschools.net. Providing a mechanism excuse me, C, providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please email hmstechnology at hampsteadschools.net. D, adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. We will start the meeting with a roll call attendance. Melissa, you can call the roll. Uh, Ms. Malcolm. I'm here and I'm alone in this house. Thank you. Mrs. Cornell. I'm here. I am alone in the room. There are other members of my household present in the house. Mr. Smith. I am here alone in the room and others are in the house. Mr. Sweeney. Oh, I just got unmuted. I am here. And it's public, so whoever wants to be in my house can be in my house. Okay. Mrs. Yasenka? I'm alone in my office, and there are other members of my family in the house. Okay, thank you. And also seated at the virtual board table is Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Earl Metzler. Thank you, Melissa. Um, in your packets tonight, we have two sets of minutes, one from our regular meeting from May 12th, 2020. And then additionally, you have um, a copy of non-public um, meeting minutes from also from, the, from May 12th, 2020. If you can take a moment to review, and when you're ready, I'll take a motion in a second. All right, if everyone's ready, do we have a motion to accept the public and non-public or we can split them up? A motion to accept the public and non-public. Second. Okay, great, any discussion? Okay. Seeing and hearing none, Melissa, will you please call the roll vote? Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? 
Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. And Mrs. Yasenka? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to current business, the first item on our agenda is um, a remote learning presentation by Mr. Flynn. Thank you, everybody. Um, so in speaking with Dr. Metzler in uh, the administration, um, we felt as though, uh, since this is the last week of school, um, presenting you with a start to finish wouldn't really do us best because we haven't finished yet. So I'm gonna give you some key updates for this evening. Uh, and then in June, we will give you the, the start to finish of when we started on March 13th and how we finished out the year. So um, some quick updates uh, for the final meet, uh, week of remote learning. Our area of focus um, has been behind the eighth graders and the fourth graders, um, trying to close out their uh, experiences at their schools and, and making sure that we, we, the area of focus is on them for um, a couple year end events, a couple things that are happening within the faculty. Um, and those will, will come out and play out as the week goes on. I don't wanna share all the surprises for the students, um, but we, we have been working hard to make sure that the, that when they look back, they say that um, you know the principals and, and the teachers took care of us uh, during this difficult time. So um, the, the, you'll notice also that uh, the administration has done a, a great job of trying to maintain some of those events that have occurred every year, um, whether um, where it be challenging because it's virtual. Um, the central school did an outstanding job still completing the, the grade two community project uh, with the, with a video. So that was really uh, neat to see. Um, in regards to participation, I think that's important to bring up uh, because, you know, we sit in a lot of these meetings um, all week long with people and the challenges that they're facing throughout the state. Uh, but in Hampstead, we have uh, 98 participants, over uh, around 98 percent, part excuse me, 98 percent participation um, within both buildings. Um, in those two percent, um, we uh, we are we we call the families. Um, we work with them and, and we're, we're making sure that we're, we're, we're getting everyone through this finish line here uh, on Friday. Um, uh, a big update that, that we want to discuss is, um, you know, Mr. Collins and Dr. Cheney met with uh, the teachers and the leadership team of teachers at Central School. And we really wanted to um, come up with something of value uh, for the end of the year for parents and students in regards to uh, report cards. Um, you know, central school report cards look uh, much different than the middle school. Um, so in meeting with the teachers, you know, they advocated for what they wanted to do. Um, and what you're going to see here at the end of the year for central school families is um, you're going to see a, a pretty, pretty extensive narrative on each student, if you can believe it or not. Uh, the teachers are going to take their time to give uh, uh, parents and guardians uh, a full narrative on, on how their student um, uh, number one uh, was doing prior to uh, remote learning. So that would be the first third um, uh, when they were in school. Then they're gonna get a pretty good narrative on, on what their student has accomplished during uh, their time in remote learning. And then the third part of the narrative, um, you're gonna see uh, recommendations or um, things that are gonna be communicated to parents to keep an eye on. Uh, but those things will also happen during the next two weeks when the adults are working in our transition meetings. So we wanted to do our best to give you an idea of what was going on while we were still in school, if you can imagine how long ago it was, uh, how they did during remote learning. And, and then finally, we wanna make sure that we're all on the same page heading into uh, whatever may be for next year currently uh, in regards to each student. Um, and then uh, you'll see the middle school will stay the same. We're gonna be using um, power school, uh, grades, comments, all that will be coming through the normal standard way. Uh, and then last, I want to mention how hard uh, the middle school uh, is working, uh, not just for their eighth graders, uh, but for everyone. But the, the two things that are coming up big and huge are uh, eighth grades tomorrow night is me in a minute. Um, and that's been, uh, believe it or not, I think they've been working on it for about three or four weeks now, trying to organize, record, uh, edit, all those fun stuff uh, that comes now with remote learning. And then last, um, our virtual graduation is well underway. Um, we've recorded speeches, we've recorded musical um, students uh, doing their part. So you'll, you'll see the same agenda that you always see every year, uh, but clearly it's gonna be through a, a virtual platform. So again, I think uh, just 
I want to commend everyone here trying to get through the finish line on Friday. Uh, it's been a lot of hard work. Um, you know, in my short time here in Hampstead, it's, it's been quite amazing to see uh, the blood, sweat, and tears that go in uh, on both ends, not only just with uh, the adults and the faculty and the staff, uh, but the parents, families, and students. So it's been, uh, it's been amazing to see. So that's our update for, for this, this final week, and, and we'll get back to you in June with a, a start to finish presentation. Great, thank you very much, Mike. Um, do any board members have questions or comments on this? Update. I just appreciate all the hard work. My kids really enjoy all the, the, the videos and the postings and everything that's happened so far. And they're looking forward to uh, this week. So thank you. I'd like to comment on what you said, Mike, about um, what Central School is doing. I think that's um, a really impressive undertaking. Um, and I think we'll give families a really comprehensive look at, at what their student was doing and then was doing in remote learning and then, you know, something that parents can, can do moving forward. So thank you to, to Central School for, for looking to do that. That's impressive. So, and yeah, middle school too, but I get that it's not possible in middle school. <laughs> uh, if I could highlight one more thing that, that our team has done in and I think it's so important is they haven't, I think they've actually even brought more attention to the transition from the fourth to fifth grade. Um, you know, there's been parent information sessions, there's been musical sessions and, um, and, and Ms. Danola and Ms. Uh, Ms. Joseph and, and Dillard and Tara Lynn have all done a, a phenomenal job of making sure that those students are transitioning with confidence um, and, and we've really taken care of them. So I appreciate their work. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone on remote learning? Okay, thank you, Mr. Flynn. Um, we're gonna move on to the facilities, summer projects, lists and costs. Mr. Mackey, thank you for joining us today. We haven't seen you in a while because <laughs> you know, no one's been at school, but I know you guys have been busy, so. Sorry, Jeff, there you go. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I uh, hope you're all doing well, and uh, it's good seeing you all. Uh, so as, I'm not sure if you guys can see, I had sent you guys a spreadsheet uh, for the school board to look at. Uh, starting off with projects, I've got about 12 of them that are uh, hopefully to get rolling once July 1st hits. Uh, first off, at both schools, I'm looking at doing some window tinting on a bunch of the uh, rooms that get affected by the sun. It's a very cost-effective way to reduce heat heavily and UV rays. Um, that way we can uh, knock down some of that heat in those rooms. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to getting that in as soon as possible so we can uh, see how well it works during these hot, hot summer days. Uh, next on the list is going to be the 40s wing. I'm going to redo the wood floor up there. It hasn't been done in quite some time. I asked some of my longer tenured workers and they said it hasn't been done since they've been there, so it's due time. Uh, after that, the Middle school gym is in need of some water damage repairs at one of the doors and the usual refinishing of the basketball court every year. Uh, after that, I'm looking at getting some ceiling tiles done. Most of the middle school is pretty good, but we have two classrooms that are in heavy need of some attention. The industrial arts room and the art room, those ceiling tiles will definitely be swapped out this summer along with the um, kitchen at the central school. That kitchen needs to have um, certain tiles. They're made for kitchens. Um, and currently we don't have them. We just have regular ceiling tiles down there. After that, we have some miscellaneous plumbing in the industrial arts room uh, and possibly the art room. I'm looking at maybe moving some sinks around that are in the middle of the floor or upgrading them at least. Uh, and then at both schools, miscellaneous painting. We have a bunch of areas that just need to be touched up. Uh, back to the middle school, I'm looking at renovating the industrial arts room and the art room. The floors there are long overdue for uh, some TLC um, and with them being kind of different than normal classrooms, I'm looking at doing a polished concrete and maybe a epoxy paint floor for the art room where they're a lot more durable. They'll hold up much longer. Um, those floors are more, they're kind of wet. Uh, and you can tell by going in there and seeing 
the moisture bringing the adhesive up. So the polished concrete would be the best thing, best long-term, low maintenance, easy to maintain, easy to keep up with in those rooms. Uh, after that, I have doors on my list. Uh, there's, you'll see a range there between 2,000 and 10,000. I have had some quotes earlier in the year on repairing a few doors that are in major need of rot, rust, bloating, that need to be fixed and possibly even some that are replaced. I'm waiting on a door guy to come, uh, hopefully at the end of this week, if not early next week, to give me a more solid number on that. Uh, we have the recess door at the Central School. Uh, the grate there is beyond gone. I got quotes to fix the grate. It's like $5,000 just to fix the grate. Not the best, in my opinion, form for that entranceway. It's a very small entranceway. Uh, so I'm looking at bringing in a mason to build up the concrete and maybe do some sort of aggressive um, entrance carpet. That way it can collect the, uh, the muck and sand and dirt off the kids' shoes when they come in. Uh, and then the last two, I have a fence replacement at the Central School that I had just taken down and it needs to be replaced. And I'm looking at getting a possibly a new uh, clock system at the middle school. The last, last fall, we had a system that went down and it's finding the world's smallest needle in the world's biggest haystack for the problem. And the system itself is very old. So it's almost time just to upgrade and central schools isn't far, far behind that either. So that's pretty much it right now. And there will be money in my account for any SAU project that comes up uh, whenever a decision gets made on that and any money to accommodate any needs for reopening when we reopen. Uh, so there's no need for, to worry there, we'll have uh, quite a bit of flexibility. So and that's pretty much it, other than, you know, in-house projects that we have with my own workers, so. Okay, Jeff, does this include the um, kind of ongoing classroom updates for HM? Is that I think that's separate, but I just want- to Kind of, I'm, I'm going with more of the industrial arts room and the yeah. art room this year, because the current flooring that we're putting in those rooms I've had a lot of complaints with my staff. They're very hard to clean. Um, they look nice, there's no doubt about it. They're very good for moisture, um, but the composite material vinyl that it is, so like if a table gets dragged on it, it digs into it and that dig, that mark is there permanently unless we start peeling up pieces and replacing them. Uh, and on top of that, it's just, you know, one scenario we had a, uh, a kid, a pen exploded and of course it landed on a yellow tile <laughs> and they dragged it between classroom to classroom and my custodial staff was fighting for months trying to get all that ink up because the composite vinyl it, it almost like it adheres to it. it you know if you get a, an adhesive on it or an ink it kind of like burrows into it so it's kind of i'm trying to hold off and see maybe down the road what you know if it gets better uh the products you know maybe you know it'll upgrade down the road what they're offering or um you know maybe another alternative um you know, outside of it, it does look nice, but there's a lot of negatives that I'm seeing just in a short period of time. And, you know, it's, you kind of want to make it as low maintenance as possible so you can put forth your effort into other areas, not just, you know, ink stains on the floor. So. Big, big, big focus though, Caitlin, this year is on, on those two rooms, the uh, industrial arts and the art room um, at the middle school. And um, where we are, um, I've asked Jeff to make sure that we have enough in, in reserve and in stow to address any needs that we have a facilities perspective going into um, the new year uh, in September, late August and September. And some of those projects, the flooring projects that we've done in the past, again, the focus this year is on those two big rooms, which are, which are quite a, a project on their own. But um, depending on what the vegetarian needs are, we will be able to accommodate some of those as we move forward um, during the breaks, winter break, um, and that sort of thing in the future. But I think at this point, we're trying to be very cautious to make sure that we get the projects done, we need done, get them done well, and have enough in reserve to be able to um, cover any of those expenses that we may incur as we look at uh, a reentry. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody else have questions for Mr. Mackey? Okay, I'm not seeing much. I actually do have one more question for you. Yeah. So obviously our buildings are sitting, not really being used. 
Is there anything we should, and I, I know Jeff just said, we'll, we'll have the funds to deal with what we need to, to reopen schools. And, and you mentioned that as well, Jeff, Mackey, sorry, they're both Jeff. Um, but is there anything we should anticipate because systems are sitting or anything like that? And I know you can't predict it. I'm just, it's more of a curiosity piece. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is tough. I have had one of my maintenance guys walk through on the regular to make sure that we haven't had any, you know, units go down. We were fortunately, fortunately when we left, it was during a colder time. So the systems were still running mm -hmm. kind of at half throttle, which was good for it. You know, you, you want them to run. Uh, so knock on wood, the, at least the HVAC systems have been running just fine. We shut them down last Friday, I believe. Um, all was good there, but you're right. I mean, a lot of the plumbing, having it sitting, you know, you're, you know, we may have minor leaks. Um, but with, during the walkthroughs, really nothing has been found. Thank God. So. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Mr. Mackey, this is David Smith. Just a question. Um, you know, when we talked to probably about six months ago, you were getting your, you know, getting your feet underneath you and you were evaluating some of the, you know, previous plans that were put in place. And you had thought that, you know, later on this year or early into um, the fall that you'd have a better, you know, a three or five year plan. Is that still um, on your charter? Uh, it definitely. I mean, I'm still working on it. I mean, I've only been here, what, six months now and two of the months I haven't really been into my building. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. it's definitely on my radar. I've been keeping, you know, I've got a notebook full of notes on, you know, you know, what, in my opinion, you know, everyone's going to have their own thoughts in this field. Um, but what, in my opinion, you know, priorities would be and moving forth. So when do you think that we'd be able to have that? Uh, I mean, I would hope after, you know, probably by maybe the fall. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I think we're all set. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank Mackie, you. And thank Jeff Dowd, you chimed <laughs> in too. So. Um, all right, next up on current business is the H HCS Construction Planning Committee. So we've continued to talk about the fact that we need to keep this at the forefront for everyone. Um, I know we're in a super uncertain time. We don't know what next year looks like yet. We don't know how budgets are gonna be affected or anything else. Um, but that being said, I don't want this pushed to the wayside. And um, I would like to go ahead and have us maybe pick um, two members you know, somebody to head up any committee planning um, and then probably another member to contribute as well. Um, but I do want to hear what people's thoughts are on this because as we just keep saying, we don't know what the future holds right now. And um, so I kind of wanted to get everyone's thoughts. Um, you know, David, I, I know you've had an interest in kind of spearheading this. So I don't know if you have any thoughts or anyone else but I just thought I'd start yeah I'd say the position's the same that we wanted to push forward really hard this year this was the year we wanted to um, start early finish strong um, to raise as much awareness even more awareness or whatever it's going to take you know get out there so that's my position I, I don't whether there's any sort you know whatever's going on right now and you know everything the pandemic that's going on right now but the school's going to be here for many years and we need to do right by our kids. So that's the position I'm, I'm at. Okay, and would you be interested in heading that up? Without a doubt, unless anybody else wants to, but I wanna be a part of it either way. Uh, let's, let's start there. Um, anybody else wanna fight David for heading? <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to let you. I won't fight him, but I'll work with him. <laughs> Okay, I mean, I, that works for me. Um, you know, if, if more members want to be involved, it's fine. We do have to remember that if it's a committee uh, meeting, we cannot have more than two members because three is a quorum for us. So, um, I mean, I, Karen and Jim, I don't know if you have any strong desire to be involved. I guess we could pick names out of a hat if you do, but. Um. No, I don't have any strong desire to be part of the committee, but I do have some comments that I'd like to just throw out there today for consideration. Yeah. Um, I think in, in, in light, as much as I was a proponent 
for the um, design plan that we have in place already that we've worked on so hard. I keep going back to the fact in my own mind that because things have changed so much educationally because of um, the pandemic, I'm not, I don't think anyone's really sure what going back to school is gonna look like in the future, whether it's this fall or a plan three years from now. Um, I was thinking that if it were up to me, and it's not, <laughs> if, if it were up to me, I would set this year aside and do some research, uh, collect some data to see what other towns, to see what other countries might be doing. Um, if going forward, we're gonna have to uh, keep a distance, uh, the plan that we have now may not be the right plan. We may want a plan that has larger classroom space so that the kids can spread out more. Uh, we may even wanna go to um, an idea that uh, Megan had brought up last year. Maybe we need to look at a, a school building that provides for some more outdoor space. And I know that this is New England and it rains and there's thunderstorms, but there could be something with some kind of covering. Um, I just think this is an opportunity to take a look at our plan and see what changes we might wanna make moving forward. Um, I don't have a crystal ball, nor does anyone else, but I just don't think my gut feeling is telling me and the data that I've looked at is school's not gonna be the same. I don't think we're gonna go back and put 25 or 23 kids in a classroom. Um, so, so for me, I, I would use this year as really a year to collect data and, and see what kind of design plan we want, what will best serve our needs next year or three years from now. Um, so I'm just throwing that out there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Karen. I mean, I think you certainly raise a point. None of us know what, a good point that no, none of us know what this is gonna look like. Um, I think it makes sense to continue to have the committee and see what, you know, David and, and Megan can bring back. Um, you know, both, to, to David and Megan, um, you know, we, we do have teams that we've worked with in the past. It doesn't mean it has to be the same team um, as far as our experts and our construction people go, um, we'll have to figure out dollars if if we did want to bring them in again, just as a heads up. I know you guys probably know this. I'm just talking um, about what we've done in the past. But really, I I know I'm open to whatever you guys want, however this you want this to look. So I don't think we need any vote. Um, but you know, David and Megan, you both volunteered, and um, we can talk about moving forward. If you want to do periodic updates, if you um, need any support from staff with setting up Zoom meetings or anything else, so um, I mean, unless there's anything specific, I would say you two are. Uh, me I feel like Melissa. Melissa, did you have something or no? Sorry, I thought you were like waving at me to get me to do something. Jim is. Why, Jim, why are you waving at me? He's on mute. Okay. I, I clicked on mute. Oh, there we go. I was just waving. Yeah. Just trying to distract me, and then I can't run the meeting because I do such a good job of that anyways. Yeah. And keep us all on track. I what Melissa has to say. Well, was she waving? I, she probably wasn't even waving at me. She probably just moved, but I, I think she winked. I'm sorry. I was looking at my dog run by. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, it's totally fine. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so David, Megan, anything you, anything else you feel like you need to kind of move forward? I think partnering with staff is going to be very important. You know, you know, of course, uh, working with you, Dr. Messler, but with uh, Mr. Mackey. Uh, with Dillard and others just to, um, you know, get that foundational layer of what we want to do and how do we want to approach so we're all on the same page. And then how do we plan out the next few months, you know, keep strong in the summer. To Karen's point, you know, connecting with you, Dr. Messler, on what is going on, what, is, what are you hearing um, from your peers, um, as well as getting us connected throughout the state. 
I think that'll be important. So I think, you know, definitely starting to set up something more uh, structured than we did last year uh, to get, you know, on that strong foot um, going forward. I think yeah, that Caitlin, good. Um, yep. The, um, yeah, we certainly, uh, myself and, and Mr. Flynn and Mr. Mackey and Mr. Dowd, um, we're, we're available. So yep. I think, um, and as we get into the building staff as well. Um, so yeah, whatever, however you want to set that up. I mean, I think right now we we're doing it like this, I guess, and for the yep. foreseeable future. So, um, that's okay. I mean, at least every, you know, we can get started and kind of get, get something and then, you know, perhaps, you know, then start to, you know, give us some direction. If you, you know, you're looking for certain data that we need to, to bring back to the group, we'd be more than happy to do that. So we're, uh, we're willing and able and ready as soon as you are. All right. Thank you. All right. It's all in your hands now. Megan, anything? No, no, I don't have anything to add. All right. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Um, well then we'll, we'll keep going. And you guys tell us when you need the board for something. Um, okay, next up we have the SAU 55 final audit update. Mr. Dowd, I believe you're gonna be speaking to this. I believe so, yes. So this is, uh, well, you've got me agenda here, correct me if I'm wrong, this is for the uh, audit for the uh, next year ended or is it for the, the one that we just completed for 19? We're looking at the transition audit. Um, yeah, I think like the, Yes, the final audit. The final audit. The yeah. Joint so, SAU fifty five. Yeah, so, that would be the um, you know, obviously you just finished the the eighteen nineteen audit for SAU, mm -hmm. correct? Correct, yeah. So they they're looking for nineteen twenty to be turned around quickly and then they have that final audit, um, you know, that final year, the transition year audit. Yep. Really, really early so that um, you know, they can wrap things up and have a really good idea where they are financially in terms of yep. assets and liabilities and, and all those things. So my, my goal in that final audit is to have that turned around. So obviously our, our year end is uh, June 30th. Have that turned around for July 31st um, in order that you can, you know, the two entities, you and, and Hampstead and Timberlane can work out um, those final balances and settle up on any amounts that are, that are uh, resulting from their withdrawal. And I think that we look at it early enough and, uh, you know, understanding the importance of getting that um, those final numbers, those final figures to close out the work that you do. Um, I think that we can do it. It would be very tight. I've spoken with audit and I think that it's very doable. And if we can, then that would be, that would be very good. My, my goal is to have that 2021 audit done, completed uh, in everyone's hands for July 31st of that year. So that'll help you, whoever's on that negotiating committee, I think Dave, and I'm not sure who else is on that negotiating committee. Oh, uh, Caitlin, you can be aware of what the timing on that will be. And my, you know, Okay. That sounds good. Anybody have any questions about that? I mean, I know it's kind of out in the future, but um, it is an important piece that um, I know for negotiations, we'll, we'll want to have that date nailed down. And so Jeff, that's helpful to have from you. Um, that's what you'll be targeting. Um, Next up under current business, we have SAU 55 reorganizational planning. Um, not much more to report currently. Um, as far as our negotiations with Timberlane, those will take place June 11th via Zoom. Um, and hopefully soon after that, we'll have um, final information. And um, as far as what Hampstead will look like as a single district SAU, um, I know we mentioned last meeting, we do have a draft plan um, that we are moving through. And I would anticipate doing some sort of public, I'm trying to figure out, you know, normally I would say a meeting where the public can can ask questions. Um, I think we should maybe talk about a way to do that online. Obviously we have Zoom, we have the capabilities. Um, I would just wanna keep it from, I know we have to do certain things so that um, people can ask questions and we can be given an opportunity to answer without kind of giving full reign to the public to be jumping in on a meeting. Um, but as I've been thinking about that, I mean, it, it does make sense to me to um, be able to 
get that out to the public, get some feedback. I mean, I think we have a very solid plan drafted, um, but I wanna make sure that the public is aware of it and, and what we're looking at and what um, potentially costs will be and everything else. Um, some of that is up in the air because we have negotiations to go through um, with the, the, the withdrawing district. So um, we're getting there. And I am hopeful that by the end of June, we'll be ready to do something publicly. Um, but there, there are things that just have to happen um, within the board level first. So I don't know about other board members' thoughts. That was my thought that, that you know, we, we need to find a way to get this out publicly and give people a chance to ask questions. Um, so we make sure people have correct information and that, that there's not incorrect information being spread around. Um, because this is, you know, we've been dealing with this for months, um, you know, even prior to the vote that Timberlane took, we had to be prepared and, and ready to start looking at things quickly. And I think we've done that very well. We've been doing our research. Um, we've been getting expert opinion um, and details. So um, anyways, I don't know if anyone else has thoughts or questions or input on, on that idea. I mean, this was just my idea that I just wanted to put out there. Um, I know I've talked to a couple other board members who um, we're interested in doing something along the lines of a public forum. Um, it'll be different than what our forums look like otherwise, but um, I don't know. Any thoughts or feedback? I think it's a good idea. We'll have to see how it goes with Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I'm sure we'll have to be talking to Mike about what our options are there um, as far as a, a way the public can maybe it's maybe it's emailing in questions um maybe it's even like a two-part forum where we present what we're looking at um present what the what we're looking for the plan to be and then people can email in questions and then the next night or two nights later or something we can address those questions i i don't know the best way to to do that um that's a little outside my zoom experience but um I don't know. I I can help. Whatever you decide, there's there's ways for people to raise their hand in Zoom. Um, there's ways that I can unmute and mute. Um, okay. So we can certainly have a you know just a working session uh, to figure out a plan for you guys. Okay, that'd be great. And again, I I don't know what anyone else's thoughts are on timeline. Again, I'm I'm thinking a, end of June. Um, as you far as meeting one date. meeting in that time frame what you're only going to have one meeting what, what we only have one regular meeting but the question is like could we schedule something else because we i mean as far as time so we have a meeting on the 9th in june which is essentially going to be a regular meeting because some of this we just can't finalize until i mean with timbaland you know, so you're going to mid, meet on the 11th right so you yes. might you might yeah. want to meet two. I don't know. Are we gonna we're gonna meet more than once, correct? For negotiations. Yeah. All I know right now is is we have the date of the eleventh. Um, okay. it'll be a question of how much gets done. Yeah. So I I think it would all depend on that. Yeah. You know. Oh, you, agreed. You know, agreed. Yeah. yeah. I th I think what you said is good. I mean, if you get information out there during one of our meetings people might not have a lot of questions. It's good to give the information first so yeah. people aren't just asking questions that are already going to be answered. No, um, that's a good point. To give them the information, let them digest it, and then whatever, a week or something later, we... Right. Like right now, if you had a meeting and they didn't know we had a plan, they could ask any question they wanted. Mm -hmm. But, you know, after the 11th, if we tell them what our plan is and what's going on, then they're like, cool, you guys got it handled. Right. I have no questions, so... Yeah. I guess we'll have to see what happens on the 11th and then see if we could schedule something then or we need to wait even longer. Yeah. Yeah, and I think one thing also we will um, certainly want to talk to Mike about is that 
obviously this will be a meeting. It'll be a public meeting, um, but we'll be looking for questions from Hampstead residents. So we'll need to be able, you know, I know when, you know, when, when someone has a public comment or when we're talking about um, deliberative or something, we do ask people to come out and state where they live so that we know that, that, that um, we're giving information to Hampstead residents. So maybe we'll need to figure that out a little bit too, Mike. Yeah, that's an interesting and challenging point. Right, no, <laughs> <clears throat> I understand, I understand. And, and may, it may be um, a little bit too difficult um, to confirm, but it, you know, obviously it's, this is for our town and we wanna be able to give the people from our town a chance to ask the questions. So we'll figure out something. Okay, uh, that's all I had for an update or to talk about for the reorganization piece. Anybody else? Okay, we'll keep moving. Okay, next up, um, so this was about, uh, this next item is about um, posting for our meeting recordings, especially. Um, and this is something that Mrs. Malcolm brought up, which I thought was a really good point. Um, we do have um, a district Facebook page. Um, typically that page, and please anyone correct, any admins correct me, but it's generally administered by um, our principals. Um, although I know other admin people may, um, may be doing postings periodically. Um, but Megan brought up, you know, why you know, shouldn't we have our, our recordings posted there? Um, and I thought that was a really good point. Um, so I just wanted to, Megan, I don't know if you have anything else you want to add to that, um, but it's certainly another way to get that information out and give people a chance to watch our meetings. And it's an easy click rather than trying to search for it on the cable page or something like that, um, or on the district page, but. Yeah, and I guess one other thing I'll add, I, I recognize that the meetings can get pretty long. Um, the last one we were here at after 10 o'clock. Um, so even if, you know, we prepare or we could post the videos and then um, somebody could prepare an executive summary or something more informal just with key highlights. So people can, you know, they see the video. Um, we have this outline as to what was um, shared and discussed and if anything piques their interest, um, you know, maybe go about it that way. Um, seeing a, an hour to two hour long video on Facebook, um, I don't know how appealing that would be to parents and teachers um, in the community, but. Um. I mean, I know we, we, you and I talked about this a little bit. Um, as far as the summary, I, my only concern is when things go out from the board, especially when they're written, they tend to have to be voted on, mm -hmm. which would mean that we wouldn't be able to vote on it until the, like the next meeting, which would delay it a couple of weeks. Um, and while I appreciate every, anybody who wants to watch the meeting, um, sometimes I feel like our summaries wouldn't be very short. Um, <laughs> but, um, I mean, one thing that we could do, though, that that might be a little bit easier and more concise would be to post the agenda with the recording. Um, that way they'll know what the, you know, I know sometimes we go off onto occasionally onto like tangents or, or little other subjects, um, but generally we're sticking with the agenda. So that way they could quickly look at the agenda and say, okay, you know what, I, I definitely wanted to hear what they said about the reorganization of the SAU, so I want to make sure that I, um, and, and then they can even see, I mean, they'd have to click around a little bit, but they would be able to kind of say, okay, well, I know it's towards the beginning of the meeting. I, I don't know if that would work or if people, because then also we're not asking, um, say, Melissa or somebody else to kind of make a summary um, where we already have the agenda there. I don't know. Caitlin, can I? Yeah. Um, so social media can be very powerful, I think, um, used in the right way. And what you're, you know, I hear you're saying, you know, posting the agenda with the video. Um, one feedback I've seen, and you know, even before I was on the board, was 
I would want to know what the agenda was, but I'd have to remember to go back and look at the website every time, right? Because it, it, I can't sign up on the website that where it's posted for a reminder of anything po new that's being posted to the website versus if we were to able to push the agenda on the Facebook page, people can sign up for that page anytime something changes, anything, something's added, somebody could, then they would know what's on the agenda. And then we may get, you know, I know we've talked about it before, we may, who knows, but get more public opinion or public uh, input um, on upcoming meetings of what's important to them. You're saying post the agenda on the Facebook page prior to the meeting, as well as when we would post like the recording. Correct. Correct. I don't have an issue with that. Um, I I don't know who the best person for this question is. It might be Mike. Um, Mike, who? I mean, I know I know that that Mr. Collins, Dr. Cheney, um, Mrs. Joseph, Mrs. Danola. I know they do a lot of the posting. I mean, is this something that would be easy enough to have you do or, or somebody else in the tech department so we wouldn't be putting more on our, our principals? Yeah, it, it, the social media sites are all, I'll say team, um, everyone uh, manages them um, for information. And, and, I, and, and I'm not against Facebook, so let me be clear on that, you just start, you just start to get in trouble when you start to manage multiple areas of information. Um, so you want to typically pick one and drive all your traffic to one site. Okay. And that's not for me. That's for you to decide. But if we're going to drive all our traffic now to our Facebook page, then we need to, I'd say that would become the priority of maintaining, you know, documents, things of that nature. Right now, currently everything that we have agendas, videos, everything's driven to our, our home site. Um, we can, we can manage multiple sites. You just end up losing traffic if people are going to multiple spots or spaces. Um, so that's, that, would, that would be my only area of concern on, on losing traffic or wouldn't, because we do field all the can't find this, can't find that. Um, now you're gonna have people directing different lanes of traffic uh, on where to go to access stuff. So um, sometimes things get lost in translation I think certainly posting the agenda, that's, that's not a problem. Um, we can link the video to Facebook. Um, the reason why we use YouTube and um, Vimeo, Vimeo's, Vimeo's money, sorry, Venmo's money, whatever the V one is, sorry. Um, <laughs> is, yeah, is, um, is because of space and size and, 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 and all the database. So um, I'll certainly do whatever you guys need, but those would be some of my, my apprehensions in, in directing traffic to multiple spots. Yeah, Mr. Flynn, this is uh, David. I, I would yeah. never say post to both. Uh, okay. For, you know, my background, what I do, I would never do that. I would never suggest that. I would, I would suggest keep it the way it is and drive traffic to that site. Okay. So it's posting the link to yeah, where the YouTube easy. page yeah. is. Post yeah, the link totally. to where the agenda yeah. is. And then, yeah, that's, you know, that's easy. yeah, that's what I was suggesting. Okay. I didn't want, I didn't want the Facebook page now no. to become our, okay. Uh, that's not everything else you talked about. It's fine. We can, yeah. we can link everything. We can, we can also tweet it out through all that. We can link all those together so that everything is going out at the same time. Cause I think that that's also under the data governance plan that we have is, you know, driving traffic to one, but also being limiting the access to one place. You don't double yep. post, triple post. Right. Yep. yep. I can work with my team on that and, and, and the administrators and we can certainly start that. Um, I would say rather quickly, so. I think that works and it, it, it definitely makes sense. I don't want, personally, I also like the fact that the Facebook district page is predominantly about our schools and what's happening at our schools, et cetera. So um, I certainly wouldn't want that to be totally taken over by school board um, at all. So um, is everyone in agreement that that, that makes sense? We'll, we'll just ask that our tech and our admin team just post links to those um, to direct people to the website for mm -hmm. the agenda and the meeting recordings. Yep. I, I do. I just have a question, Mr. Flynn or uh, Dr. Metzler. Is Facebook our only social media site? Or do we have any other Hampstead, you know, um, be it Twitter, be it any, any other social media? We have, I'm sorry, Dr. Metzler, you want me to take that? Oh yeah, go ahead. I mean, obviously we have Twitter and um, yeah. So, so we just manage Twitter and, and Facebook. Okay. No Instagram, no nothing else. So those are the two. Thank you. 
currently currently <laughs> you have you have ideas huh mr flynn <laughs> yes <laughs> okay well i think we're all set then on that sounds like we're good um under current business, our, our, our last item under current business is policies for first read. In your packets, you have two policies we're looking at for first read. Um, we have EIB and JLCEA. Um, so you'll see um, we, if anyone wants to review it, if you haven't already done so, um, then we can talk about us. Um, motion to move to second read and um, go from there. Um, just for a quick update, you'll see that EIB is a current policy with revisions and then JLCEA is actually a new um, policy. So when you're ready, take a motion. I'd like to make a motion to move the two policies to second read EIB and JLCEA. Second. Any questions or discussion on these before we vote? Okay, seeing none, Melissa, will you please call the roll vote? Uh, one second, sorry. There we go. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. And Mrs. Yasenka? Yes. Okay, thank you, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, next up. Board comments and correspondence. Based on our new normal, I'm gonna go in the order I see you. Jim, you're up. No! <laughs> um, just getting ready for Friday. Some special events at the school. And I just wanna restate to um, everybody at Hampstead Central School and Hampstead Middle School, I appreciate all the work they've been doing um since we've left school and i definitely want to restate as a board member that i know over the next few weeks you guys are going to be looking at things maybe get some information from the state that i know i fully support you looking at technology training needed coming the fall if we have to do something different or whatever that may be um buy some new technology to do presentations um whatever the whatever you know, however our school is going to look in the fall, I fully support you guys. And that's it. Thank you, Jim. Uh, next, I see Megan. So, Megan, your turn. Um, so, I, I saw some communication regarding a survey that came out to... Um, I have not taken the survey. I haven't even clicked on the link, but... Um, from the New Hampshire DOE, um, I think soliciting feedback on how parents and teachers in the community want to see or how they envision school to look um, when we go back in the fall. Um, I guess my question is for Dr. Metzler, um, what your thoughts are on the survey and um, if you, I guess just if you have any insight to share. Um, opinions, feedback? Certainly. Um, you know, as I, I, I did take the opportunity to, um, to fill out the survey um, without being overly critical, I, I did not feel it was all that well written. Um, it, it, it definitely takes more than 20 minutes to complete if you read the questions and think about each one of them. Um, it's quite long. It's quite long. Um, you know, we got, we got the survey. I got a, a couple questions today asking us why um, we hadn't sent the survey out. And I forwarded the email to those folks because um, they didn't ask us to send it out. I mean, they did ask. It was clear that they were soliciting information from many stakeholders, but it was sent to us and they didn't ask us to send it out. Um, it's certainly something that we could do. We could send it out. I think they, I think they need to take a look at it. I mean, some of the questions are, I mean, you get a chance to read it. You'll, 
you'll see what I'm what I'm talking about. Some of them feel real. I mean, pe people that have sent emails to me felt like some of the questions were leading to a desired outcome. And so it didn't feel like a survey that was truly taking a, the pulse of the community. But, it, you know, that being said, you know, no survey is, is necessarily perfect. Um, I, I did get a few emails from uh, parents in Hampstead. I got back to them. Um, you know, I was copied and some went to the commissioner, some went to me. Um, basically, you know, what does it look like? And, and we have a lot of unanswered questions. I mean, the survey is, is put together by the task force. The task force is charged with making some recommendations in terms of guidelines for what, what the fall might look like. And so um, it's, um, it's, it's a comprehensive look at lots of programs and areas, including special education, uh, ESY, um, you know, students that speak more than one language. Uh, so it's, um, it's, it's quite comprehensive, but we, we do have some serious challenges ahead of us. So as, as a board, um, you know, Mr. Flynn and I were talking about this today. Is it something that you want us to send out to the community? I'm not quite sure why the task force didn't request that, but um, that's something we certainly could do. I didn't know, know what kind of uh, where you were on that on that top. Uh, I've taken the survey. I'm not sure. I I took it twice for both for two different children. I mean, it did say you could do that. So I'm, I did it. Um, I have to agree with a lot of what Dr. Metzler said. Um, I found the questions pretty biased in the way they were worded. Um, while I, I'm going to keep my comments kind of to myself a little bit more than that, but um, I certainly encourage people to take it because it does ask about how the the remote learning went, and I, I say it. My children did fine because they had teachers who had already put down an extremely strong foundation this year. I do not believe remote learning is the way to move forward long term. And I don't mean if there is a continuation of a pandemic. Um, I personally felt a lot of the questions were leading towards brick and mortar schools are not necessary. And uh, personally, I have seen the stress and the anxiety that has been experienced by my children um, by being isolated from their teachers, isolated from their peers. Um, I think our teachers and our administrators, and we've said this multiple times, have done amazing with the circumstances that we are in, but we are in an emergency. We are not in a, an ideal learning situation. That was my opinion. <laughs> I probably should have kept my mouth a little bit more shut on because I don't want to bias people. But I, I, going back to what Dr. Metzler said, I mean, I, I we could send the survey out. I, my well, only uh, question, what? That was me. Sorry. <laughs> I have no hand to raise here. I'm a still picture. Sorry. I, know. <laughs> I was going to say, um, I think though, I mean, if we send it out, we're sending it out as a school board. And number one, I think it's a really poorly drafted survey. And I certainly wouldn't want to take responsibility for sending out a poorly crafted survey that also I feel, and maybe you didn't want to say it, but I don't really care. I think it's very unfortunate and sad that the commissioner would use a pandemic to push forward his own school choice and homeschooling initiatives, because that's clearly what this is doing. It's eroding public education. Uh, this is not the first time that this commissioner has done that. And I think that this is just really poor that he took advantage of a situation where we're using remote learning. So all those questions were geared to that in this time. Um, yeah, so that's it. So no, you asked, should we put it forward? I would say no, because I personally, as a school board member, don't want to be associated with this survey. I totally agree. Uh, if you, I, I did not see it yet, but if you guys have problems with it, then, you know, we did not write it. If we want to put out a survey, we should write a survey. But, I'll send you the link, Jim. You can fill it out. Right. I know I do want to read it because yeah, um, no, yeah. let's put a name to who we're talking about. Frank Edelboo, 
I, I probably said his name wrong. I really don't care. Yep, pushing school choice. Our kids need to go to school, okay? Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen in the fall. Um, my kids love school. They don't wanna be homeschooled by me. Um, and public schools are the way to go all across this country. So that's his name and that's the guy who's pushing that survey. So I say no, don't send it. Don't even think about sending it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think those are good points. Karen, I think that was actually what my next question was going to be like, the board or the district sending that out, does that somehow become an endorsement or or we have some sort of responsibility in it? I, yes. I mean, that's if anybody's what, watching, what? go to the DOE website if you want to fill it out and that's, you can find a link. It's, it's, I it's think, there. So this is David. I think people are less, personally, I've heard three times today about the survey uh, from people asking me about it and they've asked, well, uh, whatever they say on the survey, does that mean that the, we as a school district are going to have to do or not? So I think they're more concerned with what is our school district going to do? Not so much what is whoever at whatever level, at whatever golden chair they're on, um, going to say we should do. So they're more concerned what we're going to do. Are we going to follow and abide by and whatever, you know, direction or whatever, you know, opinion somebody says we should do? Or are we going to set forth um, based on a lot of data, based on a lot of input, what is Hampstead going to do? I think that, that that's what they're more caring about right now. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, Dr. Metzler, can I ask you, and I know this is a very unclear kind of time and topic for this, but obviously earlier this, you know, in March, the governor did say, schools are closed, we're going to remote learning. Have you heard anything about if we're gonna be looking, because New Hampshire also has a track record of local control. So, do you have any sense, and please just say, I can't answer this question if you don't know, um, and, and you may very well not have the information for it, but do you have any sense of if it'll, it's going to be some sort of state mandate or some sort of state declaration, or if we're going to be looking at, well, this is what you should do, but really you as a district can do what you want? Well, I think, um, well, first, um, th there's two parts to this. First, I appreciate the comments about the survey. I'm very, really proud of the, you know, the thought exchange that we use and the, and the, the very carefully worded questions that we use, primarily trying to be sensitive to all the outcomes and not quite sure this survey hits the mark on those. But um, to the second part is, I, you know, I, I think there's been a lot of talk about you can open and here's the criteria if you open. That's where we struggle. I mean, we've, we've had a lot of conversations, you know, it's so it's so prohibitive in terms of the things you need to do to try to keep small children six feet apart. I think both districts that I, you know that I deal directly with, have, have, um, at, from an administrative standpoint, struggle with staggered starting times. Um, half the kids one day, half the kids the next day, trying to social distance, um, how, um, our busing, the costs associated, all those kinds of things. But I think, you know, to your point, I think local control at the end of the day, the Hampstead School Board is going to drive what Hampstead does, right? So if we're told we can't do something, well, that's different. But if we have options, we want to do what's in our best interest for obviously the families that we serve. I, I haven't spoken to a family that doesn't want their kids back in school, um, but they want it done safely and they want it done correctly. And so I'm, I'm really concerned with what's going to happen as we open up quickly and what kind of data dump are we going to get in July and in August that may change what our options are. And, um, you know, there are a lot of teachers, they don't want to have to go to school and wear masks and all their students wearing masks. And so there, there, there are a lot of challenges with this, but I think if, if really the spirit of your question is who's going to decide what Hampstead eventually does, given the options, the Hampstead school board is going to make that decision. Um, local control will, will be the trump card at the end of the day, um, in terms of what's in the best interest of for Hampstead. That's my opinion. I think, um, I think that'll be supported. Um, across the state. I think that's appreciative right there. Thank you, Dr. Metzler. Can I ask a question about, about that? If we are told, if it doesn't become local choice, or I guess even if it does, but more so if it doesn't, and we're just told that schools are gonna open, you know, mandate comes down, so schools are gonna open, make it happen. Can we 
look at what kind of liabilities we may be looking at. Um, I've heard discussions taking place about do we need to get our lawyers or insurance companies involved? Do there need to be hold harmless waivers that if I send my child to school because I'm told they're open and I have to send them, if I don't send them, they're going to be marked absent. Is there a waiver I can sign that says if my child goes to school and contracts the COVID, I have some, the school has some responsibility for that? I don't know, you know, whether that then be responsibility for medical bills or, you know, if you're opening up a school and you can't guarantee someone's safety, I'm just wondering, you know, if that's something we need to look at. Well, those are some, Karen, those are some, some really great points. And I, I, you know, depending, if they do a thorough job, the task force does a thorough job, I would imagine many of these issues will get addressed one way or another. But I, I, I challenge folks to look at this a little bit like a snow day. You know, we, we make the decision whether we think it's safe for kids to go to school on a snow day. And I think this might be similar. Um, I think the governor, if he says schools are open, you can open them, but um, here are all the things you have to do. You know, the local school boards are gonna have to decide, um, can you do that? Are your, is your school large enough to separate kids? Um, you know, do you have the, um, you know, do you have all the resources that you need to do it safely? And if, if the answer to that's no, um, well, I think then the, you know, obviously our options are, are are quite different, right? But if, if we can do it safely, then then we have some different um, discussions to have. But again, I think um, that's why we're, you know, we're all waiting, you know, you know, eagerly awaiting the, the task force kind of recommendations or guidelines, if you will, because I think we'll be able to pick apart what's missing if there are things that are missing, what, like what you just brought up. So um, we'll have that opportunity. Thank you. Can I piggyback on that real quick, uh, Karen, just to ask Dr. Metzler, it, and I know it's different, but just hear me out. Is it any different than like, you know, I'm not comparing it to the flu, but any other disease, any other type of, um, I'm sorry, just disease at school, uh, are schools liable for that? If a kid goes to school and catches something from another student, are we ever liable for that? I don't know, but with other things, David, don't we have, oh, I'm sorry, you were asking Dr. Metzler that question. Yeah, and I'm, not, I'm just playing, trying to play devil's advocate a little bit because, and again, I think this is much different and much worse than the flu, so I'm not demeaning it at all. I don't want to compare it to that. It's just the closest thing I can think in my, my mind right now. But, well, but so. think about this. Think about measles instead of the flu. Your yes, child, thank you. Your child cannot go to school without having a measles vaccine. Uh, vaccine. You can't yep. be vaccinated to go to public school. It's, uh, you know, it's obviously, um, you know, state the obvious, it's hard to prepare for what you don't know. Right. Um, but we do know this is highly contagious. We do know that we don't have a vaccination. We do know that this, you know, that asymptomatic children walking around can really harm uh, the community in a way that, um, you know, is immeasurable in, in, in many ways. So I think, again, we'll, we'll have to take all, the, all that data and just make the best decision for Hampstead. Is it safe? And you know, can we do um, what we're being asked to do? And if the if we can't do it safely, then you know we have to look at the alternatives because um, you know the vaccination is really the key element here. You know, once once there is a vaccination, I think you know our choices it'll be different. Um, to to Dave's point, you know, it, it it might be more like H1N1 or or the bird flu or or other um, other illnesses that we've been able to kind of manage and still manage school. This is just there's just so many unknowns uh, right now with COVID-19 that it's scary. And I think, um, you know, it really comes down to the safety of children. And um, at that point, we know what the answer is, right? If we can't do something safely, we're not doing it. And that's, you know, that's no different than a snow day, really. It's a little different. A snow day, you get blamed for it. I keep hearing you saying this is going to be a board decision. <laughs> well, uh, you know, hey, I'm, I'm trying. But I, I, hey, listen, listen, I know exactly. Well, I know exactly how this will go, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll do it together. I mean, that's the way Hampstead does things. We do things together. Uh, and that's true about the whole community. I think, you know, one of the things, um, you know, my father-in-law points out to me, he's like, it's just a, it's just a wonderful community. Cause you know, whether it's a parade or it's something at the school, it's like, we, we really kind of do everything together. So I think this will be important for our community to be really comfortable with whatever decision we make in regards to school for the fall. And uh you know, we talk about public meetings, this will really be where we should be spending our energy to make sure that everybody's on board. And, you know, we're not going to get everybody on board, but uh, we, um, we have to do our best to make sure that everyone has all the information that the kids are being, you know, that we're, we're making sure the kids are safe. That's really at the end of the day, 
uh, that's the most important, right? Agreed. Thank you. Oh, we're still in board comments. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. <laughs> Megan, you got, Megan, you got another, another comment? <laughs> um, who's next on my list? David, you got anything? I don't think I could follow that up with anything, but, uh, you know, no, I'll just echo. That was a good discussion, though. No, Megan, it was. Thank you for bringing that up, because that really, I mean, it's certainly something we're all looking at. Um, all right, David, you said you don't have anything. Karen, Nothing. do you have anything? Um, Caitlin, um, yeah, but I think if you don't mind, would you just bring everybody up to date on the latest with um, the legal issue and yep. how we're now going to the Supreme Court? Yep, that was my thank you. Next thing, or that was my comment. Uh, so I did send all this to board members, but I'll um, update for the public. So we, uh, in our ongoing attempt to try to find out what liabilities may lie with SAU 55. Um, the Butterfield report, which um, to do a quick recap, we had a favorable ruling back in uh, early April that the report should be released to the Hampstead School Board. Um, at that point, the SAU board attorney was authorized by the major the weighted voting majority of the SAU board um, to file for two things. One, a stay to um, avoid having to release that report because the judge's um, initial ruling for Hampstead asked that it be demanded it be released in 10 days. They asked for a stay, which they were granted. The other thing they asked for was reconsideration of the judge's ruling. Um, I am becoming, I'm getting all sorts of schooling on the legal system basically reconsideration is it goes back to the same judge and they say we think you did this wrong and this wrong so please reconsider that's not um, <laughs> uh, anyway, so, that right you did what? it wrong <laughs> um so on the i believe it was the 21st last week um the judge ruled on the reconsideration uh she denied it um meaning that she was still ruling that the, the Butterfield report should be released to Hampstead. Um, side note, Hampstead also asked for reconsideration of legal fees. Um, she denied that as well. Um, so at that point, within about 90 minutes of our attorney um, notifying Hampstead of that, that denial of reconsideration, um, our attorneys were informed that the SAU attorney would be filing an appeal. So, Caitlin, was there a vote for that at the SAU level to um, submit for appeal? So the vote that was held um, at the meeting we had, I think it was the 15th. Um, I believe at the April 15th meeting, I could have that date wrong, excuse me, but at, at our reorganizational meeting, um, there was a vote to basically authorize the attorney to fight this. But as for an, a specific appeal, I can't remember if that was a wording in the motion or not. Um, but certainly since the new ruling, we didn't vote on it because we didn't meet. Um, right, because so I thought that, I thought that the, uh, sorry, I thought that the vote that we had back on the 15th was you know, that, that majority ruled to submit for an appeal or submit for a reconsideration. You know, I don't think it was a fight for everything so it doesn't get disclosed. Uh, you, you may very well be right. Um, I don't, and I don't remember. So um, I suppose we could raise the issue that they didn't have authorization to do that. Um, it moved pretty quickly, so. Right. But we can bring it up with the SAU chair. Doesn't matter with weighted voting, they're just going to take a vote and do it anyway. So why waste our time? Well, we also, um, w I don't know if I can say this. Yes, you can. About the email today. 
I guess I don't. Uh, I guess we could take a vote on that. Because I had to update everybody on it anyways. I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out if we need to go into non-public or not. They better I think I'd rather them. do it in non-public for the heck of it. Yep. Because um, it does involve legal. Um, but we can do that in a minute. No. Let's let's do the consent agenda in, in, as long as no one else um, has any questions or board comments. Um, yeah, okay. Let's go to consent agenda and then we'll go from there. Dr. Metzler, are you ready to present personnel report? I am, thank you. Um, yeah, what I'm, I'm really happy to report, and I know I, know I reported this out um, our last meeting, you know, in terms of Hampstead's ability during remote learning, it's also remote recruiting, remote hiring. Um, it's done an outstanding job, um, really recruiting staff and, and getting people into the positions. Um, I don't remember being this well staffed this early in the season in terms of our openings, but uh, in the past, but we, we, we seem to be getting, um, and so that's a tribute to really all your administrators from Mike Flynn and, and the building principals on down. But uh, so I have two people to bring to you tonight. Uh, one is a, a new school nurse, uh, Susan Dower, and uh, a middle school math teacher, Nicole Fraley. Um, both uh, highly recommended. Um, if you look through their letters of recommendation um, from people that I have a great deal of respect for that, that vouch for these folks, um, the interviewing team. So I'm looking for a motion to hire um, Susan Dower uh, as a uh, uh, our district nurse and Nicole Fraley is a middle school math teacher uh, for Hampstead. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, Melissa, will you please call the roll? Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Mrs. Yusenka. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. So that's great. Thank you so much. And we'd like to welcome Susan and uh, Nicole to the Hampstead family. Um, I think they'll be very happy and uh, congratulations on your appointments. Thank you and welcome. Oh, go ahead. Uh, moving on. Um, first, um, I know that Jeff presented to you earlier this evening uh, what the uh, fund balance is uh, in a, at a meeting in June, you're going to have to consider the fund balance retention if there's any amount that you uh, as a board intend to retain. So that's something that should be on a future agenda. So Melissa, you have that? Yes, I do. Uh, Thank you. Excellent. Um, also, while I got Melissa, um, you know, Melissa has done an incredible job um, really with these remote meetings. Um, but another challenge that we threw at her was getting out the electronic uh, contract process in both districts. Um, with those um, e-signings and everything. So um, incredible, you know, I, she just did an outstanding job. And I, I wanted to point that out because, um, you know, we take some of these things for granted that we've done one way forever. And, um, you know, we said, hey, Melissa, we want to, we need this whole new way to do things. And um, without missing a beat, she got those electronic contracts out. And um, so you did a great job. So we appreciate that, Melissa. You know, thank you for everything that you've done for these meetings and certainly for all the other things that you've had to do electronically. Uh, it's just been very impressive. So thank you. Thank you. All right. uh, moving on, um, we have a FLESH report. The final FLESH report, that's scheduled for June 9th meeting. That presentation will include a PowerPoint giving an overview of our first year at FLESH in the Hampstead Central School uh, and the student progression to first grade. So we're looking forward to that presentation. Um, you got the Hampstead School Board Scholarship Winners Update. You know, typically we're able to present the winning seniors to you in May. However, we've been informed by Pinkin that there has been a slight delay this year. Their awards committee is working on creating a remote selection process to review the applicants. So we've made them aware that our remaining meetings this year, and we hope to have the winners um, to be presented at the June 9th meeting. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, reminder, schools drop off pickup plan for materials and personal items. Plan is for gathering students' belongings and scheduling times for families to retrieve the items. This will also be an opportunity when families are expected to return the school items on loan, such as library materials, Chromebooks, iPads, et cetera, basic timeline. Uh, June 1st through June 5th for staff and June 8th through June 12th for students. Um, you know, the central staff, the middle school staff gather and bag June 1st through June 5th. Uh, central staff, middle school staff, students and families distribute and exchange uh, June 8th through June 12th. 
And finally, the central staff and middle school staff, students and family return of school owned items uh, June 8th through June 12th. This will all be posted on our, our website. You'll have, have more information. Um, medications or medical related items, families may pick up medications. However, that will require in advance a separately scheduled visit in the front lobby of the school. Medication will only be handed to a parent or legal guardian and may require a signature for release depending on the medication, right? Um, and finally, a reminder to all of our, to practice safety throughout the process. Um, and again, um, they'll be asking questions and those sorts of things about, about people's healthiness in terms of uh, how to go through this. So again, all that information has been available uh, and will be made available. Um, and so that's my um, superintendent's report. I certainly uh, can answer any questions if you have any. Yeah, Dr. Metzler, is Pinkerton, is there dinner? Their virtual dinner going to be this Thursday on the 28th. Is that right? Yeah, we, I believe we have our, our, why don't we call it our annual spring meeting? Maybe that's called. Um, I, don't, I don't think we're going to be served anything, but I believe well, they're. No, they're, not unless it's virtual oh, food. <laughs> yeah, it's virtual. You make your own dinner and eat it while you're at um, this meeting. No, so. um, but I know there is a, a pretty lengthy agenda, I think, that's been driven primarily by the board chairs um, from all the sending schools. And so that's. Um, I believe it's Thursday evening at uh, six o'clock. Okay. Uh, I believe, yeah. Thank you. Karen, did you get an email on that? Because I know they sent I, one I earlier. Did, I, yeah, I did a while ago, but um, it's, I talked to somebody at Pinkerton and it sounded like it might have been tentative that they weren't sure that they were actually going to do it. That's why I asked. Okay. I happen to have my email up. We got something. Yeah. a few minutes ago about it so oh a few minutes ago oh yeah all right it's only because i can i have my email up i can see it hmm. okay um i do we need a motion to accept the consent agenda or because we did the personnel but and you could do one if you wanted to um so that would include Dr. Metzler's report. And then also, I know you're not signing the finance documents during the meeting, but I understand those are done outside of it. So maybe just kind of a recognition of that. So if you wanted to, you could. Okay. Can I have a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Perfect. Melissa, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. And Mrs. Yes? Yes. Sanka? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any old or other business to bring before the board? Okay, um, I am gonna ask for a brief non-public. Um, I'd like to ask for a motion to go into non-public under RSA 91A colon three, section two, C and L. So personnel, reputation and uh, legal, please. Anyone want to make the motion? I can't make the motion, Caitlin. What? I, I know you can't make the motion. I, I need just to make the motion. Oh, so moved. Okay. That's what you said. So moved. Okay. Thanks. Melissa, will you please do a roll call vote? Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Parnell? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Mrs. Jasenka? Yes. Motion carries. It's 824. Okay. See you in the breakout room. <laughs>